All right, we're going to be dealing with simple and compound sentences in this lecture. Uh, the critical thing to remember about a simple sentence is that it has one central idea. Uh, it contains a subject, that's the person or thing doing the action, and it contains a verb, that is the doing word. This is an independent clause, right? This is an independent clause that is standing on its own, right? It will not have any subordinate clauses in the sentence, right? It's just going to be one independent clause. And we can look at it this way. We can write a, an example here. The tiger jumped. Og get away. This is Og. Right? Og. Um, we have in this sentence we have um, let's get, we have subject verb that makes this a simple sentence. We have subject verb. Right? Two simple sentences. Right? Pretty straightforward. Simple sentences. Uh, you would imagine are generally always simple. Not the case because a simple sentence can have more than one subject. We call this a compound subject and it can have more than one verb. We call that a compound verb or it can have both. Right. So going back to Og here, we can have, um, let's see, the tiger uh, jumped and Jumped and scratched me. Right, so Og has come back from the forest and reported to his fellow brethren, the tiger jumped and scratched me. Right, so we have one subject, but we have a compound verb. And the critical thing that you need to relate to is that they both relate back to that same subject. They're both related to one subject or to one central idea. This event happened, and there may have been more than one action, but it was still one event. So let's look at a, another sentence where that uses both. Okay, so we have um, Og and uh, his club. Og and club um, run and hide. Right. So in this situation, we have two subjects, two verbs. Right? Two subjects, two verbs. Still a simple sentence. It may be a complicated simple sentence, but it's still just a simple sentence. Okay, let's look at compound verb uh, compound sentences and see how they differ. Okay, <clears throat> to begin, a compound sentence will contain two or more independent clauses, and just like a simple sentence, it will contain no subordinate clauses. So you may as well think of it as two simple sentences, two or more simple sentences that are combined together. And that is important to remember because you can have more than two. You can have multiple independent clauses joined together. The, the important thing to remember though is that um, the independent clauses of a compound sentence are going to be joined in one of two ways. Uh, either with a comma in a coordinating conjunction, which is fanboys, that's the acronym fanboys, or a semicolon. All right, so let's talk about the acronym fanboys first. Right, so this is for and nor but or yet so. So you're going to generally see this in the sentence as comma for comma and. If you see any of these sentences comma but, if you see any of these constructions without this comma in front of it, most likely, especially for and, especially for and, it's most likely part of a list. You know, um, and even then it'll have a comma in front of it sometimes. You have to make sure that it is part that is joining two independent clauses and not part of some list or some other thing like that. So let's look at one here. Tiger jump og, him get away. Right, so let's let's spread these out a little. Right, because there's multiple ways that we can join them together, and each way that you join them together is going to change the impact of the sentence. We can start with a very basic tog, tiger jump, og. Let's actually use the pin here. 
Tiger jump Og, comma, but him get away. Despite what Og may have thought, um, you can use, uh, let's see, Tiger jump Og and him get away, right? This was almost a dual action. The important thing to remember his is independent clause, independent clause, this is what's joining them. All right, now, that seems like a, there's a continuity. You can still, of course, always join them with a semicolon. And a semicolon, now, a semicolon, you can use a semicolon in replace of a period, and uh, the general rule of thumb on semicolons is they are less strong than a period, which means the two independent clauses you're joining are going to be more related, but yet it is stronger than a comma, which means that they need to stand by themselves uh, more than a comma would let them. So it is sort of an in-between punctuation mark. So let's look at um, a little bit more complicated sentence. The eight shots coursed and pounded through Mr. Brock's veins. He continued to teach and ignored the shadows talking back to him. They always had the wrong answer. Right. So, let's go through this. The first step is that we noticed, well, obviously I put the gap there, so I noticed, but we have this independent clause. The, the eight espresso shots coursed and pounded through Mr. Brock's veins. He continued to teach and ignore the shadows talking back to him. They always had the wrong answer. We're dealing with three independent clauses here, right? One, two, three, right. So let's, both has, we have subject, subject, and then of course we have a compound verb in this one, verb, verb. We have subject, then we have verb, and then um, this is an infinitive. Uh, and this is also a verb. So in this one, we also have a compound verb. And then we also have subjects and verb. So again, each subject is related to its own set of verbs. This subject, this subject is related to this, these two verbs. Uh, no, this subject is related to this verb. And this subject is related to this verb. So three separate independent clauses. So let's combine them together. Uh, the eight espresso shots coursed and pounded through Mr. Brock's veins, yet he continued to teach and ignore the shadows talking back to him, semicolon, they always had the wrong answer. Silly shadows. Okay, now, often students will have trouble distinguishing compound sentences from sentences with compound subjects or verbs. And you kind of have to pay attention to them. So, in this sentence, Og is a caveman and has issues with jumping cats. Okay, so we're, we look at this and we say, ah, clearly there's the subject. And let's look for the verbs. We have one verb, is a caveman, has. Second verb, well, look at this. We have, let's get a different color here. Look at this, we have an and here, ah. Well, clearly we're dealing with a compound sense, right? We have two different verbs and a con and you know one of these coordinating conjunctions. Well, this is the problem. One, we don't have a comma in front of the and, and two, we only have one subject. So it's one subject, and it appears this is a compound verb. So this is a simple sentence, right? There's not another subject to go with this verb. So this verb has to go with that with that subject right there. Let's try another one. Og and the other cavemen in the village unionized hunting, and the tigers negotiated a settlement. Well, the first thing you should notice right here is this comma and, right? Comma fanboys. And that's a great clue. Uh, whenever you're looking at a long sentence like that, see if you can find comma and. Now, of course, that could be part of a list, and you have to make you know sure that you know what you're dealing with. So let's look for the subjects. Og cavemen, right? We have subject, subject, in the village is a phrase, so we can kind of take that out. Unionized, so that is the verb, unionized hunting. And now we have this other one, tigers, ah, second subject, negotiated, verb. So this verb and this subject go together, and these two subjects are linked to this verb, right? 
So clearly we're dealing with two independent clauses. This is a compound sentence because especially since it is joined by this comma and this fanboy. All right, let's recap for a moment. First, simple sentence. It's going to be one main idea. It's going to be one independent clause. and It is not going to contain any subordinate clauses. Now, this doesn't preclude it from having compound subjects, more than one subject, or compound verbs, more than one verb. Nevertheless, it will not have any subordinating clauses or more than one main idea. A compound sentence is going to be two independent clauses, i.e., or two or more independent clauses, i.e., two or more simple sentences. It's also not going to contain any subordinating clauses. And while it might have uh, within those independent clauses a compound subjects or compound verbs, it's always going to join those independent clauses in one of two ways, with a comma and fanboys or a semicolon. So it's very straightforward in that regard.